my name is Sio Sia Lang. I'm a PhD student at the IRNRS in Quebec City. Today, I'm here to present to you my project, which is the GraphNow Network, a step towards developing a companion to physics-based hydrogeological models. So in brief summary, what we did here was we developed a data workflow coupled with a graph net to forecast graph water levels. And we trained our network using data that was simulated from a numerical model. So our model is a data-driven model that captures spatial and temporal variations in water levels based on various stresses such as climate change and human uh, usage. Our results show that the predictions of our model, the graph neural network model, are comparable to those of the numerical model, but using our model significantly reduces time and computational power and cost. Project members include myself, doctors, Ewan, Danielle, and Maxine. So I'd like to start by giving you a general motivation of what we're doing here and why we came up with this project. So our idea was to develop a deep neural network model that could be coupled to a numerical model to extend that model's life and usage. And we like to be able to forecast um, flow estimations quickly in the face of climate change and anthropogenic stresses. And we would like that model to be able to help um, scientists and natural resources managers to sidestep building multiple numerical models to save time and cost. So we will address some of the challenges and when we go through our workflow, I will address how these challenges were met. So the first challenge we encountered was to select a neural network that is appropriate for our spatial chemical forecasting. There exists many neural networks, but not all of them are uh, appropriate for what we're doing. So to select them, to test them is quite challenging. The second challenge we have is the couple spatial and temporal features. So we have different sets of data, um, different types of data. How do we incorporate all this data together to use? And our third challenge was data dimensions. We have multiple wells that we're forecasting at levels, but we have multiple parameters in these wells. So we have a dimension problem. How do we reduce these dimensions so that we could train our neural networks? Before we start uh, to show you our workflow, I'd like to give an example of a graph and what a graph is. Here you're looking at a social media network graph that I took from the internet. What you're looking at here is nodes and edges. The nodes here are individuals, people, and the edges is the connection between the people. They know each other, there's a connection. They don't know each other, there's no connection, no edges. So we like to apply the same. So what we have here is we represented the nodes as wells, and we have edges that connect these wells have some kind of hydraulic conductivity or spatial conductivity that we declare. So why do we use graphs? So this actually addresses the first challenge we have. Uh, well, graphs are very flexible. They can be used for non-structured data. Here, our wells are non-structured spatially in terms of location, they're not in a grid. So being able to select network doesn't require a structured grid is very important to us and that's why we use wells for non-structured location wells. So this network can also be coupled with other neural networks such as convolutional neural network or recurrent neural network. As you'll see later in our framework we actually have a graph convolutional neural network coupled with a RNN. So that comes in very useful when you have time series data. Well, can handle uh, edge features and no features, and it can also be utilized at the graph, the edge, or the node level. So, for example, at the edge level, could we detect missing edges in these graphs, uh, or are there missing nodes, or we can use the whole graph and to do something with it. So, it's a very powerful neural network, and it's very useful, and that's why we chose it. Okay, so our workflow. So our workflow contains a few steps, five in total, 
and we'll go through them in slightly more detail than this graph. So we'll start by step one. So step one is numerical model simulation. So we are developing a machine learning tool to couple to the numerical model. So the first thing we need is our numerical model. We do simulations on our numerical model. So what we did here is, as an example, what our data set, we took the uh, model here on the top, as you can see, and there was already built 22 pumpkin wells. We randomly selected 22 monitoring wells from this domain, as you're looking at, and we applied the numerical, um, we applied simulation scenarios to this model. So the first one scenario is a graduate increase in pumping rate, and the second scenario is graduate increase and decrease. So we apply these two scenarios, and we do a simulation, then we extract data per time step for specific time steps of this transient simulation extracted data. So this is the data we extracted. We extracted location, hydraulic conductivity, steady state head in each of the wells, the pumping rate, so the scenario pumping rate that we applied to it, and also the transient ground level uh, water uh, in response to the pumping rate that we have applied to this. So See, we have two different uh, data sets here. We have uh, a spatial data set, which we use in green to construct our graph. And the red is a time series data, which we use for forecasting. So we have to separate this data. So this addresses our second challenge to couple spatial and temp together. So step two, graph construction. So how do you construct the graph? So using the green data you just saw, in the previous slide, what we did was we calculate the Euclidean distances between one well compared to all the other wells, and we apply a radius filter. So for example, if the wells fall within this radius cutoff, that means they're connected. We draw an edge between these wells. If they fall outside this radius filter, then they're not coupled, they're not connected, and that's it. Um, this is a graph projection of our data. So as you can see here, this is a neighborhood and this is an, another neighborhood in separate colors. I just want to note that this graph has no basis in the physical locations of our number of wells. This is simply a projection of the connectivity of our wells. There is no physical relationship to the location. Um, we can see the location later. If you're interested, please ask me to show you. Here's step three, where we took our red data set and we used it for, um, we prep it for neural network training. So what we did here is we take all the wells and we take the pumping rates and the transient groundwater level response that's a response to the pumping rate and we take this data set of each well we do a pca embedment principal component analysis embedment and so we transform it into the pca space per time step not the whole series but time step wise and then we split the two components up so what we have here is we now only have one component that we're using for neural network training, which is the transient ground water level. Step four is our network training. So what we did here is we took the adjacency matrix that we get from our graph that we have constructed, plus the principal component of the transient water. Then we send that information into our network, and our network contains two layers of graph convolutional network and two layers of LSTM, long short term memory, which is an RNN. And then we go through activation, we dense our notes, and we do a prediction. And this framework was first developed for traffic predictions. Mm -hmm. Step five is inverse transform. So we get our prediction from our neural network. We bring back the clone that we split from step three per that time step. And then we do an inverse transform to get back to our original space. Here, I will show you some preliminary results that we obtained so far from our workflow. 
So we randomly selected one monitor well and one pumping well. Uh, what we did here is scenario one. As you recall, scenario one has a graduate increase in pumpage. So monitoring well 11 here at the top, you're looking at the plot where it comes out of the graph neural network. So this is in PCA space, principal component analysis space. So the red is predicted and the black is the true label. As you can see, our, our trends are quite well. Um, obviously, we're not exactly, uh, but that's okay because we're not looking for exact, we're looking for trends, and the trends match, and things are okay here. It's not perfect, but it's okay. So what we did was we separated our time series into training, validation, and testing. So the training is used to train our model, the validations that validate training results, and the testing is a complete separate set where we test the results at the end. Here's monitoring well 11 again, a scenario two. As you recall, scenario two increases pumping through time and decreases in time again. So what we have here again, the top is in PCA space and the bottom is inverse transform. And I like to get your attention to the red um, graph here that has a jump. This is created by the instability in the back transform in PCA space. And this is pumping well 43, uh, scenario one. And in top graph, PCA space, bottom graph is inverted back to our original space. And again, pumping well 43, scenario two. So that concludes my presentation. And here are some concluding remarks. So our workflow is robust and achieves good groundwater level forecasting with, the, with different pumping scenarios. Using our GNN model for prediction, what will mean take seconds and minutes instead of hours, days, or weeks while using a numerical model. And this framework could be used as a tool to help geoscientists and water resources managers. So our next steps. Step one, you see here. Step two is to adapt our model to be more inductive, which means it's just more flexible in terms of forecasting. We currently finish this step. So next year, we'll be moving on to step three, which is extend this model to be trained with field data to model the entire water cycle. Then if we have time, we'll do step four, which is transfer learning. For more information, please contact me through my email. If you like to have a technical discussion, please email me as this presentation was made for everyone. Thank you very much for your attention. I will be taking questions live now.